Hello, whoever you are. This is Chris Bark from Arcane Games, and this is a generalized tutorial for anybody who is a contractor for Arcan who is coming in and trying to build um, AI War 2, or more specifically, get it so that uh, they can test it and all that locally. The last one of these I did was a while ago, so it's time for a fresh one. So first off, I assume that you have an SVN login and that you have, um, and I've sent you the URL separately, and you have done an SVN checkout. I guess I can't show that on there, I'll show it here. Do an SVN checkout using that URL into some folder that you call whatever. In my case, I've called it AI underscore war underscore two underscore ultra because uh, we had some other um, versions of this in the past. So once you download that, um, which will take a while, then you'll have something that looks roughly like this minus a few folders. Now, um, unlike our other games, this is not a single Unity project. This is actually four, plus a number of other smaller um, just code uh, projects in here. So let's go through this stuff because uh, doing getting it so that you can launch it is not a one-step process, unlike in the past. So uh, first of all, the Unity projects that exist in here are uh, AIW2 Modding and GUI, AIW2 Music, AIW2 Unity, and AIW2 Unity Prep. Those four projects, those four folders are Unity projects, and you're going to want to open each one of those with a separate instance of Unity. You don't need to have all of those open at all times. In fact, you'll almost never have the music one open in particular. Um, but anytime something changes in one of those, then you'll need to open that particular one and build some asset bundles. And um, then um, uh, the one you actually run is AIW2 Unity, and that's the one you can actually do your testing in and so forth. Nothing is pre-built. There's no four artists version in here. Um, the assets bundles are not pre-built. Uh, the reason for that being they're huge and we pay for our bandwidth uh, or, and storage, not bandwidth, just storage with SVN. And so um, just the Windows asset bundles alone, this is like a gig and a half at the moment. So um, as you can imagine, um, with that updating frequently, that's not something we want to have happening. So when you update, when you open the AIW2 um, Unity project and you come in, you will see a variety of stuff, one of which is a um, scene called Actual Games. You double click that and it opens and you probably see this. At this point, if you hit play, it's going to give you all sorts of errors. Um, and not let you play. That's because we haven't built any of the prerequisites for this. At this point, um, by the way, the Unity version that you should be using is whatever we're on presently at the moment, um, at the time of, of you starting this process. At the time of this video, it's 2017.1.0 P4. Um, and that's the patch four version of Unity. Um, so you'll open that up. Um, and then let me go ahead and show you the process for opening uh, one of these things fresh. So you've you've opened up um, um, your version of Unity. And when you're wanting to open a secondary copy of it, if you've got it on your task manager, then just right click it and then um, click the Unity uh, symbol again up at the top. Don't click one of the individual projects and it'll open up the second one. So you can have, at the moment you see I've got three open plus this fourth that is not quite open yet. So then you go open and then you go to the folder that you wanna open. So I chose AW2 Music is the one that I would show you opening because it's by far the smallest. It's just got a few, music files in it, and that's it. 
um, and then it'll disappear for a while and think. Um, the very first time that you do this with the modding and GUI one and the prep one, um, that may take like an hour to do a bunch of importing and create a bunch of shadow files and so forth. Um, expect that this can take um, on your disk maybe around in the ballpark of 20 gigs. Um, it's going to spend a while calculating that, so I'll just leave that to the side. Um, so uh, we'll start out with uh, AIW2 music. There's not a scene that you actually need to open in here. I've got one that's called blank scene, but we don't actually care. Um, in order to do what you need to do, uh, go under the arc in um, menu in Unity um, and hit build music asset bundle. At that point, it will do some stuff saying eventually done building music asset bundle. It went really fast for me because mine was already built. <clears throat> um, and that's it. Um, unless more music gets at, you know, when more music gets added to the game, um, if you care about having that present, then you need to do that again. Other than that, you can now ignore the music um, project. That's not true of any of the other three projects. You'll never be able to ignore those, unfortunately. So um, I've already opened these since these take longer to open. So um, before you can build these ones, there's another step that has to happen. Uh, you go in here underneath the folder batch scripts and um, a whole bunch of batch scripts. You're going to need to be running on Windows for this. There's an a underscore mono build all dot bat. Um, you go ahead and you run. You know what? I'm I'm going to go ahead and do an update right now from SVN because I'm out of date. Um, uh, Keith has been doing stuff, and so there's actually a good chance where I can actually show you some new things. Uh, I'm going to pause the video real quick while this does an update. Okay, so this is actually a good lesson right here in terms of uh, what to do after an update. Uh, what is it? You're definitely going to need to compile. If Keith has been at it, you're going to have to compile. But you look at the folders that have been updated, and that will tell you, is there something else that you need to do as well? Uh, Keith and I go through the same process so that we know if there's something we need to do. So folders underneath AIW. AI War 2 Ultra, we've got a bunch of stuff in Universal and Core. Those are DLLs. External Visualization Code, also DLLs. More Core stuff. Uh -huh. Modding and GUI. Uh-oh. Okay, so this here, this Modding and GUI project, um, that is the Unity asset pro um, That's the Unity project that has any sort of modding components, and it has all of our fonts, all of our GUI buttons and text. It has our um, shots in it, like you know, bullets that go flying, uh, and some other things like that. It has our formations in there, things like that. So um, anytime one of those sort of things changes, we have to do a rebuild of that particular asset bundle. I was going to do one anyway for the sake of example, but now I have to do one. Um, more stuff in Universal and external visualization code, blah, 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 blah. This is all just uh, code stuff, so nothing going on here that's going to require an asset bundle build. Uh, more external code, configuration stuff. That doesn't require anything. This is deletion anyhow. Um, external code, blah, 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 blah. All right, and then we've got game data stuff here. Anything that's under game data is stuff that is read at runtime. So that is truly, let's say, inert. Um, it's not something that you have to actually touch. All right, so at this point, I know that um, aside from giving you an example, I actually have to build the code and I have to um, build the asset bundle from the AI, AI War 2 modding and GUI project. So, all right, I hit OK. So to build the code, all you have to do is come in here and double click uh, a underscore mono build all dot bat. Now that's actually not quite true. The very first time that you do this, and if we ever update the uh, version of Unity we're on, 
you're going to have to do one setup thing just the one time before you do that. So there is a, um, where did I put it? What's it called? Um, it's right here. There's a thing called mono build underscore machine specific setup dot text. Now, um, you're, this is an SVN as an example to you. You'll notice above there, I have a thing called mono build machine specific build up setup dot bat. That is not something you will find in SVN because that is specific to your machine, my machine, Keith's machine, et cetera. So that doesn't get checked in. You're gonna need to create a version that's specific to you. Now I'm assuming that you've already installed Unity 2017.1.0 P4, assuming that's the build we're on the time you're watching this. You will then need to set, um, you open up this text file and it's got a few things uh, going on. Um, First of all, it's got a unity path that points to your, um, I'm going to show you on mine. <laughs> um, you've got a unity path that points to where you've installed the specific version of unity um, that we're using at the time. Now I have something like 10 different versions of unity installed at the moment. And so I name each one. Um, after what they, uh, what version of Unity it is, and I put them under my D program files. So for me, this is the path. Make sure that you have the trailing slash, or it will freak out and die. Um, the AI War path here is pointing to where your SVN root install is. So you can see here, I've put it on my D drive under VC large, um, and AI War two underscore ultra. I already said again, trailing slash. Steam content path, you can ignore. You're not going to be doing anything with that. Set super brief equals true. You can do that, and it's kind of handy. But if you run into any errors, get rid of that so that um, Keith uh, or I can see what your errors are when you're telling us about it. Um, skip sync, you can set that to be true or false as well. So you basically just fill in your own information here for these two things, ignore the rest of this, and save this text file. You do a save as, and instead of saying .txt, you do .bat. And in order to make sure it doesn't do .bat.txt, you need to put it, put it in quotes. I don't want to overwrite mine, so I'm just going to say .bat2. And um, so when I save that, you'll see that I should now have .bat2. And of course, it does not know what a .bat2 file is. It shows up that way. So if you don't put the quotation marks, it'll do .bat.txt. All right, that only needs to happen once. At this point now, assuming that you've pointed everything in the right place, it now knows where the compiler is. That's why we needed that here. And it knows where to put stuff that it compiles. So now we double click a mono build all.bat, it pops up a window here, and it is now going to go through and build individual um, uh, projects. Now, um, I've got it running as super brief, which means it only shows me compiling errors and warnings and doesn't show me a bunch of other verbiage. It makes it so that it's more obvious when there's a problem. Now, You'll see there's output here, nothing. That means it was successful. Here on AI War external code, there's a bunch of warnings. Um, Hedger Badger the modder um, has some stuff that are assigned but not ever used. And so um, it's giving warnings about that, but it's not actually a problem. You'll see here, compilation succeeded, 24 warnings. A warning is not actually a problem. It's just saying, hey, your code has a little something in there. You might have made a mistake or you might just want to tidy that up. Doesn't matter. Um, in here, uh, okay, we've got compilation failed with two errors here. Our visualization code, um,
has two errors for some reason. Uh, can't find the namespace that it's supposed to have. Well, that's interesting. Let's try running this again, and it may find it now. All right. Um, let me pause for a second. Okay, so what's happening here is something that you may run into. Um, we have a folder under our AIWAR2 Ultra, whatever your root folder is, called Reliable DLL Storage. And it's got a bunch of stuff from Steam, and then it has ARC and DLLs in here. Now, these ones get automatically compiled and updated. Today is uh, December 19th, so those got compiled and updated. Unfortunately, it does not automatically put, there's in-game data, again, a subfolder here, moddable logic DLLs. There is um, AI war external code.dll. This was updated on the 19th as well. You can see this other stuff is more out of date. We want to take this AIWAR2 external code, these two DLLs, the DLL and the MDB for it, and we want to take these and we want to copy these into the Arkin DLLs, reliable DLL storage. Um, this will give, um, when this thing compiles under the batch script, it will now find the external namespace which is inside that dll that we just copied um there may come a time in the future where um well darn it uh huh. i'm gonna pause this again okay so here's what's going to happen. I've got this fixed now. Um, I usually compile from Visual Studio, and Keith does too. And so I think this is why it hasn't been coming up for us. Um, so compilation failed. One errors is what you're likely to get now. It could not find AIWAR2 external code.dll. So what you're going to do is what I just showed a second ago. You go under game data, modable logic DLLs take the external code. You're gonna to have to run this once, by the way. Run the batch file once, it'll fail. Um, you then go into game data, pull it over here into ARC and DLLs, um, like I just showed a minute ago, and then now run the batch script and it will work. Now, there may come a day where even though you've done this, it suddenly doesn't work again. And the reason that would happen is because something in the external DLL uh, has been added or changed that the visualization external DLL um, relies on. And so in that situation, after you see failure on this one, then you would come back in and say, okay, well, something's updated. So you come in here and you'll see some new date on the external code, but you won't see a new date on this. It, you know, it'll be um, quite updated at that point. You get the new version of the external code, copy that into reliable DLL storage arc and DLLs, boom. And um, at that point, um, then you run the batch script again and it will work. And um, that should be comparably rare, but the two external uh, files do reference each other. So that's what's up with that. Um, so at this point, Code is compiled. Um, anytime Keith makes changes to code, um, all you should have to do is just pop in here, double click that file, runs through. It'll give you some warnings, probably. Won't give you any errors, probably. And that's that. Yeah, this is 18.5 gigs at the moment on disk, by the way. Um, all right, so this point now, and the next place we're going to come is in here. Now, uh, it's going to on each of these projects, um, start doing a thing where it's importing the DLLs. And so it'll freeze for a minute 
and um, try to add the DLLs. So then you have to wait. Um, you may as well go ahead. It won't do it until you actually click the window, though. So you may as well click all three windows at once and have the waiting overlap. Um, and it won't always be quite that slow. All right. Now, the DLLs have the code in them. Um, and we have a bunch of those DLLs. Um, the asset bundles have things like images, audio files, et cetera, in them. Um, the audio files uh, are another thing that goes in the AI uh, W2 modding and GUI uh, project. And what you're going to want to do is open up this one after you've built the, you, you have to have built the code first. Go in here and then hit Build Windows Asset Bundle. Um, there are various times, by the way, you might be doing work, and then you want to hit Save All Assets, and it will show you how long it took. If it took more than um, more than a tenth of a second, then it actually saved something. So this only took two hundredths of a second, so um, it didn't have anything to do, which is good. Um, Hit Build Windows Asset Bundle. At that point, a uh, new dialog will pop up in a minute, and then it will build an asset bundle which goes into the. It'll actually build several off of this one, um, and it will go into the asset bundles underscore win. The reason you don't need to do the Linux and the OS X ones is that you're just working on this on Windows and you're not going to be the one pushing this to Steam. So there's no reason for you to waste your time waiting around. Now we have a variety of different bundle files here. We've got squads, nebula materials, um, lines and shots, colors. There's an examples one. Um, there's the UI one. Um, there's the sound effects one. All of this stuff, all of them except for the goodie box, come out of this one uh, shots and lines. That's just the name of the particular scene I'm in. They come out of the modding and GUI um, one. So those asset bundles have a bunch of files in them that the game is able to then read in. Um, you can actually look at individual uh, files within here and see what asset bundle it goes into, if any. And all of those get built all at once when you go arc and build Windows Asset Bundle. And so you can see this is done build, building Windows Asset Bundle. Um, now, um, when I click over to actual game, it's not going to do any sort of compiling or anything like that to show that I built an asset bundle uh, because it's read at runtime. Same with the external DLLs, two of those. The other DLLs, the non-external ones, the ones that don't go under moddable logic DLLs, those get read at uh, when we're building the Unity Editor. Uh, these ones get read at runtime, so you won't if you don't see the little progress bar going by and you've just built these, not the other DLLs, that's why. And that's okay. Um, okay. So at this point, um, we're almost done. Uh, there is another thing which we have to build this first time. And we don't have to build this. If, if you have... Uh, um, if you've built this already before, and nothing in it changed. Keith never changes anything in here, by the way. This is the sort of thing that uh, Synth or myself or um, uh, Pepe Solo and Golden Wolf changed things in. Um, possibly blue, but not really as likely. Um, in here, again, save all assets. Um, that took three tenths of a second, so it actually had something to save, whatever that was. Um, so then we do uh, build Windows Asset Bundle. It's not bundles in this particular case because it's only going to build the one. This one uh, is going to be building the single uh, goodie box one. And all these other ones here uh, were built um, 
nothing was actually it only builds the ones that actually hit something change in them the manifest the asset bundles underscore win uh at manifest that's not actually useful but the arcan ui one uh for me that was the only one that had anything that was different in it uh that was something that keith had changed and which that's what we saw in the svn log and so it built that for me everything else is much older because uh nothing's changed in them um it's doing a build on the goodie box and so that will change to having today's date uh once it's finished um i think the reason it's having to do a build on that is because for me is because i wound up changing some stuff with the shaders in there um a while ago and i did it just as an example but didn't bother doing a build for it and so it wasn't actually in the main game yet um on my machine keith is the one that's building it and pushing it to steam so it was in the main game for players and for keith but it wasn't in the main game for me for testing <laughs> so, uh clear as mud um and you can see that it's still doing something and you can see it's building asset bundles um and it'll be done in a little bit i'm going to pause while that's happening okay that finished um and so you can see here um that now we've got the goodie box has been updated and um so now when i come back over here to the aiw2 unity project if you're just wanting to play test the game locally and you've already done all of those other steps and you haven't done any svn updates and you haven't made any changes yourself um all you have to do is just open up uh aiw2 unity open up actual game if it's not already open and hit play that's it that's all that has to happen um that is when the game has all its metadata already updated if some code changes and nothing else has changed all you have to do is come into bat scripts and run the mono build all and then run the game again and boom that's it you're done if some changes happen in the ui stuff and in the code then you would open the um modding and ui one hit build windows asset bundle um and hit mono build all do do the code build first always then build the asset bundle or bundles that you need to update and then run the game and you're good to go if you're making changes and you're doing anything in the um in the uh, prep project which is the one that creates the goodie, bro goodie box the ai war 2 unity prep project is where this is a private one it's not the one that modders are given and this is the one that generates the really huge file that has all of the um uh for the most part just ship graphics and um that one uh you know when you need to build that then that's it uh and that's everything um it is not as complicated as it sounds to actually work with because normally you're going to do an svn update by reflex you should know you're going to do a code build it's not going to hurt anything no matter what and um even if you don't need to do it, it 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 happens fast and then if there was something that changed in one of the asset bundles then which one was it in it's going to either be prep or it's going to be the modding and gui build the asset bundles from that one run the game end of story so those are the um uh three pro possible precursor steps that may happen one definitely build code two and three maybe build the asset bundles from modding and gui and prep and then run the game um once you're set up for the first time that's all there is to it uh the first time set up is a lot more of a pain why on earth is our process this complicated you might wonder the reason is uh efficiency and modability believe it or not 
from a computer standpoint, this is the most efficient organization we can have for having things actually load in and run fast. So in some cases, it's a pain in the rear for us, but it runs better. In other cases, we're having to separate out things that um, we can give to modders for them to be able to change and stuff that either um, legally for you know NDA purposes or just we don't wish to share uh, we want to keep those separate from modders and so we have a divide there as well and so um, and then we also all have different organizations on our own personal PCs of where we keep uh, our installation of unity our um, installation of the game via SVN Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we had to account for those differences too. And that makes this pretty darn, darn complicated. Um, but that's that. If you want to launch the editor, by the way, with one of these projects open, you can actually skip um, going down to your taskbar and, and clicking it. You can just double click one of these and it'll open it up right for you, by the way. Um, that's everything. Thanks for watching.